This is my brand new gaming PC. It's got everything you could ever ask for in a rig like this. We've got this gorgeous ASUS case with tempered glass on both sides. We've got 32 gigs of DDR5 with RGB. And we've got the brand new AMD Ryzen 5 8600G. As for graphics, we've got a... Uh... There's no graphics card? Back at CES 2024, AMD announced the brand new lineup of processors, the Ryzen 8000G series. These aren't really your usual high-end performance and enthusiast-tier processors, but rather are APUs, which is basically what AMD calls a desktop processor with integrated graphics on board. These new Zen 4 based processors might not be beating last gen Ryzen 7s or Ryzen 9s, but what makes them special is that they come with some of the most powerful integrated graphics ever seen on a desktop processor. In particular, the Ryzen 7 8700G at the very top of the stack features an 8 core 16 thread CPU with an AMD Radeon 780M iGPU, which is pretty much the same iGPU as the one found in the ROG Ally that I so dearly love. Now, we don't have that here today, but what we do have is perhaps the next best thing, the Ryzen 5 8600G. This is a 6-core 12-thread CPU, running with a base clock of 4.3GHz with boost of up to 5GHz, has 22MB of total cache and, for its integrated graphics, a Radeon 760M with 8 of those sweet, sweet RDNA 3 compute units. If AMD's claims are to be believed, this could mean that we could be seeing an all-in-one gaming solution that doesn't require a discrete graphics card. At least, if you're okay with 1080p gaming and perhaps not max settings. Still, that could be quite impressive as, at least with the Ryzen 5 8600G, it would be a lot cheaper than getting something like a Ryzen 5 or an Intel Core i5 and pairing it with an entry-level GPU. I mean, the Ryzen 5 8600G is currently going for just over 1000 ringgit, which is basically the same as what a last-gen Ryzen 5 5600 with something like an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 is going for, but we'll get to that later. Back to the main topic at hand though, just how good is the 8600G as a gaming PC without a GPU? Well, there's only one way to find out. Okay, so before we go any further though, I just want to say a big thanks to ASUS Malaysia who helped us out by loaning us that lovely ROG Strix Helios case that you all saw just now, as well as the 1000W ROG Loki power supply that was certainly a bit overkill. They also graciously offered their ROG Strix B650A motherboard which we paired with the AMD Ryzen 5 8600G, 32 gigs of Trident Z5 Neo DDR5 RAM running at 6400MHz, as well as a 1TB PCIe Gen 4 SSD that I just had lying around. We also used the stock AMD Rave cooler included in the box since it's, you know, free and all. Again, no GPU here, so we're only using the Ryzen 5 8600G's integrated Radeon 760M graphics. And even though this PC here has no graphics card, it actually held up pretty dang well when it comes to gaming. In Cyberpunk 2077, for instance, the Ryzen 5 8600G managed to get very playable frame rates between 30 to 35 FPS, running at 1080p with medium presets and FSR 2.1 turned on. It also ran Red Dead Redemption 2 pretty well at 1080p balanced settings and FSR 2 turned on, getting between 45 to 55 frames per second, which again, very playable. Even in Starfield, the 8600G does a mostly playable 30 FPS at 1080p medium settings with FSR 3 and frame gen on, as well as the render resolution pushed up to 75%. With all that being said though, I think where the A600G will shine will most likely be the more eSportsy titles like Dota 2 and Overwatch. In Dota 2, running at 1080p with a mixture of low and medium settings and a 100% game screen render resolution, 
I was getting between 90 to 120 FPS, with the game running closer to 110 during the laning stage, with only the big team fights knocking it down to around 90. As for Overwatch, again at 1080p, with high settings and FSR 2.2 turned on, I had no issue getting between 60 to 80 FPS. Overall, you are looking at a very competent little APU, and at its current market rate of just over a grand at time of recording, it's not that bad of a deal. You can certainly find budget motherboards too to pair it with, such as A620 boards available for less than 400 with B650 boards starting at just over 500. Also, you can totally get a cheaper case with decent budget-friendly MATX cases with fans bundled available for around the 200 ringgit mark. You won't even have to get a CPU cooler as the 8600G comes with a stock cooler, though it did rise to 88 degrees at times, so you could consider a budget-friendly tower cooler if you can spare it. Just make sure to get some speedy RAM that's at least 6000MHz as well as a decent PSU that's rated for at least 80 plus bronze. If you're planning to get a GPU down the line, you may also want to get a high wattage one now rather than having to get another PSU later too. A budget friendly option you can consider are the ASUS Tough Gaming Bronze options. Overall, the Ryzen 5 8600G is certainly a solid option if you want to build a gaming PC now without a dedicated graphics card. Perhaps you're waiting on the sale or some new graphic cards to appear, or maybe you just can't afford a GPU yet, but would still like to play some games in the meantime. The 8600G will certainly allow you to do all that quite comfortably, albeit at 1080p. When you think about it, this could even be one of the cheapest brand new gaming PCs you can build now simply because you're not having to pay for a graphics card. Of course, the alternative could be getting a last generation AM4 processor and a cheap entry level graphics card. And with DDR4 RAM and AM4 motherboards also costing a bit less than the AM5 stuff, you could certainly consider that option. A Ryzen 5 5600 and an RX 6500 XT for instance would cost about the same as the Ryzen 5 8600G here. But then you'd be locking yourself out of any future upgrade paths almost immediately and you'll be stuck with performance that's not significantly better than the 8600G anyway. In fact, one segment that I think will absolutely love this little processor here is the small form factor enthusiasts. With the size of the GPUs these days getting bigger and bigger, many small form factor aficionados could certainly consider getting rid of the GPU altogether just using the integrated graphics on the 8600G. I mean, with performance like this, who needs GPUs anyway? That's all for our quick look at the AMD Ryzen 5 8600G. Do let us know what you think of Team Red's new APU and share your thoughts and questions down in the comments below. Will you be building your own PC with this little chip soon? This has been Raymond, signing out.